Will you stop that? You are utterly mad. Stop, Holmes. Is that you, Watson? Yes, of course it is. And you almost killed me. Nonsense. I was aiming for the vases. Blindfolded? Watson, quiet, please. I'm trying to concentrate. Ah, Lestrade. What is it this time? They can see me. Well, here it is, and it's a good one, Mr. Holmes. A gentleman by the name of Peter Carey, also known as Black Peter, has been murdered. A sailor, most probably. What happened here? Oh, Mr. Holmes, how could you? It's the only exercise I've had all week. A grateful client from Limoges sent me a vase collection this morning. I couldn't think of a better use for it. You're out of your mind. Four out of ten. Given you a blindfold. Can I have a try? Am I the only sane one here? I suppose that Watson is right, Inspector. A little brain work would be preferable now. Do please tell us more about Black Peter. Peter Carey, born in 1845, but is old. An ambitious sort, he achieved much success in seal and whale hunting around Scandinavia. Retired in 1884 with a small fortune. He invested his money in a property called Woodman's Lee, near Forest Row in Sussex. It was where he lived for six years, and where he was found dead yesterday. Has the investigation already begun? Yes and no. In fact, this crime is so mysterious that I would prefer you to join me down there. Give me half an hour to prepare, Inspector. Take your time and join me there. I have to go through the yard first. The Medi Men struck again. What have they done this time? They robbed a powder reserve. I'll meet you at Woodman's Lee, Mr. Holmes. I should have Mrs. Hudson here. I also have several appointments that I must keep this afternoon. I shall go alone then. You go along to Peter Kerr's house. Mrs. Hudson and I will take care of the mess you've made here. A map of London and the surrounding area. It could be useful. Oh, what a mess! What a terrible mess! This is where I keep my post. My archive. I can always consult with it, if needed. My archive. I can always consult with it, if needed. My analysis table. It is useful for my work.
Mr. Holmes, I'm over here. Come on. These footprints appear to be quite large. It seems that the garden was well maintained. Mr. Holmes? Inspector Lestrade, when will you remove my husband's body? It's sacrilegious to leave him here like this. As soon as we can, Mrs. Carey, I assure you. Allow me to introduce you to Mr. Sherlock Holmes. He's a detective. No doubt you've heard of him. I'll wait for you in front of the cabin, Mr. Holmes. My condolences, Mrs. Carey. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Can you please tell me what occurred on the evening of the murder? Well, Peter got drunk in the evening. He was in such a terrible temper. Usually, whenever that happened, he'd stay all night drinking in his cabin before passing out. Do you remember at what time you found your husband's body? In the morning, at around seven o'clock. I noticed the cabin door was open but I didn't go in to take a look, for I knew my husband would not have liked it. At around ten o'clock, I dared to glance in through the door and... Oh, dear. Was your husband accustomed to receiving visitors? Oh, no, I don't think so. I mean, he didn't really have many friends. He lived quite an isolated life here, after his retirement. The garden is very large and well-maintained. Do you employ someone to look after it? It is true. Well, there is a lot of work, but my husband took care of it himself. You have indeed suffered a great loss, Mrs. Carey. Nevertheless, I believe it will be less of a burden for you soon. Yes. Life with Peter was never easy, but he was still my husband. He was different, wasn't he? when you first met him upon your return from Plymouth. Yes, Mr. Holmes. Oh, my goodness, but how do you know about that? You 
undertook a pilgrimage to the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela when you were young. That much is evident from the rosary in your hand. The shortest route for the pilgrim from England to Spain is from Plymouth. I believe that you met Peter Carey as a young sailor there, and you married him soon afterwards. That is indeed what happened, Mr. Holmes. How extraordinary. Thank you, madam. Who could do such a thing? My poor husband. Peter Carey's body is inside the cabin. We took care not to touch anything. Peter Carey's body is inside the cabin. We took care not to touch anything. The door is locked. Wait just a moment, Mr. Holmes, and I'll open it. I locked it yesterday to ensure that no one should enter the cabin and tamper with the evidence. Ah, good thinking. Hello, hello, hello. What is it, Lestrade? It seems to me that someone has tried to force it, Mr. Holmes. Let me see. These scratches are fresh. You're right. Someone tried to force open the door. I swear these scratches were not here yesterday. Our mysterious visitor came here last night. Well, he's not the man for the job. This lock is not a difficult one. Perhaps he did not have the right tool. a terrible way to die. Peter Carey's boots, they look to be a size eight. Old navigation instruments, nothing interesting. Harpoons for hunting whales. Hmm, the ship's logs of the Sea Unicorn for the years 1878 to 1884. Peter Carey was her captain. tooth of a sperm whale, probably from one of Peter Carey's catches. This place is not covered with dust, like the rest of the shelf. An object was taken from here. It was larger than a book, a box or a small chest, perhaps.
Dundee. Hammerfest. It's a whaling map. glass recently. It seemed that Captain Carey was enjoying a drink before he met his death. The initials PC have been crudely burned. A sailor's work. This aroma is familiar, but to recognize it, I must construct my associations in one picture. This is a coarse tobacco, quite strong and very popular among sailors. 